today we're going to change out a 5 8 solenoid valve with a manual stem. See, it goes right there. And this one is leaking a little bit. So it's low on refrigerant and it's actually short cycling uh, and low pressure. So first thing to do is, in this case we've got ball valve here, so we're going to stop flowing, we're going to stop the flow. go push the contactor in manually to make it stay on and suck everything else out we can actually speed this up some just go into the suction side and then dump it into the suction whatever's in the liquid line will go in the suction inside we've got three cases with three different solenoid valves that might not be calling and might be holding the liquid back so do this for a few minutes until it gets to zero mostly and then we'll be good all right that's that's pretty good for me okay now fuel power and get the rest of it out down to zero and pay special attention because one side of the solenoid valve will say in you see and that is you've got to have your refrigerant going in there and out the other one you can't do it the other way around it won't work okay now down here take off the solenoid valve coil got a 516 on top of it then before you cut out the old one make sure that the new one you got is the same so same diameter copper same top like this is a MKC2 coil there's a MKC1 that's much smaller diameter and it won't work on an MKC2 or vice versa. This one has the manual valve, except this one has a cap. That's good. They're both, they're, these are actually both the exact same. They're, they can disassemble them with the cap, which we're going to do here in a second. So here's a little trick. So I wanted to take this apart, but my Crescent Ranch ain't big enough. I got one that's big enough. The other one wasn't big enough. Now I could have used these to try to back it up. But what I did, see I got it loose. You know how I did that? I put this on there, right? And then I hit it with a hammer. It's like an impact. Knocked it loose. Otherwise it would have twisted this whole copper line. Instead I impacted it and broke it loose. So I just want to take this off so that I can make sure that it, there's no pressure in it when I uh, heat it up. You don't want pressure in your lines when you heat it up. No. You do not. Of course, some sandpaper. Sand where I'm going to be heating and cutting. So I 
right here. So I'm actually gonna clean the copper and unsweat it from each side. Seems the easiest. get all of it of course because the sandpaper can't get down here in the little low spots but at least you're getting some of the, the dirt off of it so that it doesn't mix up with your bolt and solder So I, I for years I always just used these tips, you know, these on my on my on my on my uh, fucking torches. See these ones, and I never would use a rosebud. Never did. I always thought I don't know what I thought about it, but I just never used it. And I started using it, and man, I tell you what, I use it all the time now. It's fantastic. Little pipe that's blocking, it, and I don't have nothing to hold my camera except this right here. So my phone sits up here, and it provides light for me, and I also record for you guys. So. These things get hot, man. I'll tell you what. Okay, first, actually, hold on. First, I need to loosen something up so that I can. Get loose. So I'm gonna pop that screw off, and I'm gonna pop that screw off. All right, there we go. That's better. Now, now you see. Now, when I get it hot, I can pop it out. All right. Where were we? create more work for myself than what I have already and what I need to do. Okay, just like that. So, we're ready to put the new one on. I got the new one here, but again, I don't have two wrenches to separate this, and I want to separate it. See, and I can't, can't quite do it. Let me see if my trick works. I can get it on camera. Let's see. Hmm, probably not gonna work. Let's see. Need to go that way. Aha, it worked. What do you know? All right, and now don't get these out of order how they come off. You gotta put them all, you gotta put them all back the way they go. I know that comes out. Now, be very careful with it. Aha. 
seat. You want to take it apart because if not, then you could melt this seal that's in there. And you don't want to melt the seal. That don't look right. Why is that? Why is that? Why is that seal broken like that? I don't like that. Nah, it's supposed to be like that. If you look carefully, you can see that the cut on this uh, this open O-ring, whatever, that's a factory cut. It's not like a tore. So, it's supposed to be like that. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Now that went like that. All right, so now we've got the body ready to solder and get hot. And then after it cools down, we put that on. I had to, I'm using a different phone now, but my other one says it's old. And it said that it can't record because of the high temperatures. It's old. It's old phone. But it still works. Okay, so. Now, like I said, in. You can't read it, that says in. Our direction of flow is that way. That's hot. All right, so. In is that one. All right, out. One. Okay. Now, now I can put this screw back in right there. Oh shit, you're upside down. Okay, the screw. So I'll put this one back in like that. Okay. I want to have this one holding the dryer. Because I'll put something over here to push on the line. But I'm gonna scoot the dryer over some more. Alright, I scooted the dryer over so that I got better room over here. Now I'm gonna put this big wrench and I'm gonna just let it chill right there for now. I'm back over here and I'm gonna start putting that on. I used the 15. Uh, it's more expensive than the 5, but it's also better than the 5, so I use the 15. this with my right hand I'm getting it hot and I'm gonna move it over with my left I'm gonna reach over there and I'm gonna pull it so that it takes up that that little space right there I'm not ready yet but still not ready there that's better that cool off or we could just speed that up with a wet rag try you can't let anything get down in there also when you're when you're working or at any time you can't you can't let that happen so you gotta watch out 
even the moisture from this towel being exposed to it is no good. But you can only do so much, you know? Definitely don't get let no water get down in there. All right, it's cool enough now to where it's not gonna melt parts I'm pretty sure okay so how did this go oh shit I got that wet with my hands you see okay so how did this go it went like that didn't it yeah it went like that Okay, then we had this thing right there, retaining ring or whatever. It all goes together like that. Tighten it, okay. Then, tighten it with a big wrench. As good as we can like that until it starts wanting to twist the pipe. And since we don't have a backup, we're gonna shock it. Next step is to evacuate the circuit. So don't forget to do that. Then after you evacuate it, you're going to make sure your gauges are valved off, closed, and then you're gonna reopen that. All right, then after you do a vacuum and you evacuate it and you're Hoses are closed. Open this up. Okay. And you leak test. So earlier, my H10 was picking up on leak out here. Let it warm up for like three to five minutes. And check it again. All right, then it's been running for a few minutes here. But well, you know it's ready when you run past this and it picks it up which it's not really doing quite yet so put it in manual mode a little more sensitive so let it warm up some more all right it's about three to four minutes warmed up i think it's pretty close okay let's see about that it looks like my little impact shock with the hammer to the crescent wrench trick worked now don't forget to leak test very important all right once you know you got no leaks uh we're ready to continue and put this back on all right and it did come with this and it did have a screw somewhere there's that screw. Okay. So we put our screw on it. suction I'm connected to liquid come over here I'm, I'm ready for power okay power looks like we're powering up and wait for it to come on and then charge it up now so when you turn it back on you're gonna have to wait for a little bit there's evidently a time delay 
If it doesn't come on right away, that's normal. And well, that's kind of about all. Once you got your part on and you've leak searched, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's the hard part. Now you just gotta fill it up to a full sight glass after it comes on. Uh, once the sight glass is full, then it's pretty much full. Make sure all your evaporators are on inside if you can. Once the sight glass is full, it's a good idea to make sure the unit pumps down. Otherwise, you might get a call back if you overcharge it. And that's it. So, happy soldering. Thanks for watching.